Welcome to Love and Light Ministries International under the leadership of Bishop Dr. Mark. Welcome to Love and Light Ministries International under the leadership of Bishop Dr. Mark S. Herod and co-pastor Reverend Kathy Ann Herod. We are located in the beautiful island of Barbados. Join us Sundays at 8.30 a.m. and on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. for our services. Remember to like, share, and follow our Facebook page every day as we share daily truths from the Word of God with our Bishop, Dr. Mark S. Herod. We look forward to seeing you come and experience the power of God as Love and Light Ministries proclaiming the love of Christ, the power, and the light of the Word. God bless you. Blessing, good morning, church. Can we all stand and prepare our hearts, our minds to be news by the Lord? Good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning is a pleasure, a great pleasure and honor to be here in the presence of the Lord standing. I'm so grateful and thankful for the opportunities that God has provided me with. This morning, I just want you all to know that it's going to be a this morning with a difference. So, yes, we all walk in with the Holy Spirit, but, you know, we have a work in the Holy Spirit in. So let me walk here, work in the Holy Spirit in this morning. Clap on on to the Holy Spirit. Walk in with someone is not inviting them in, but this morning we come to invite the Holy Spirit. Because this Spirit is so good. Uh, hallelujah. Let me give you a little introduction about this Spirit. This Great is He that's in you than He that's in the Word. That Spirit that's in you, that's the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. If He can raise Jesus from the dead, He can also raise you from the dead. If He can raise Jesus from the dead, He can keep you, He can sustain you. So this morning, give all the honor and glory to the Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Mighty Father, this morning, be so thankful, Father, for everything that you've given to us, Father, because you are everything that we would like to be, Father. You are the essence of love. Father, you are fallible. Oh, mighty Father, we bow down and worship you because you are God all by yourself. There's none like you. We can never find none to compare to you. Father, this morning, as we pour our hearts to you, Father, we, we pray that you will allow your Holy Spirit to hover over this place and like hover in the beginning, Father. Let your will be done, Father. Father, bring the ushers before you, Father, as they usher your people into the sanctuary, Father, that they will have your attitude of gratitude, Father. Order their steps, Father. I bring the, the worship team and the musician and the I teach to become one accord, Father, when they worship, that it go to you like a sweet flavor, Father, music to your ears, Father. As a man of God, prepare his heart, Father, to come to you this morning to deliver your word. Father, I pray that his word will be like a tree bearing fruits in, in due season. Father, I pray that the seeds or the fruit will fall upon the hearts of your people to cause roots, Father, and change mindsets. Father, you say that in your word, that your word is like a two-edged sword. Separate the bone from my refine this morning. I want the word to separate the thoughts. <laughs> the thoughts that seems to bombard their minds, Father. But give them good thoughts, Father. Thoughts of you, Father. I release each and every person in this place to let the Holy Spirit follow them, Father. Have your will. Let your will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the name above all other names, the name that caused it bodies to be healed, the name that caused demons to tremble, Father. Anyone this morning have a healing, Father. Let it come to the altar this morning and lay the cares on the one Jesus for he's a burden bearer. Father, let your will be done in and through this place. Have a nice day. Thank you. Blessed good Sunday morning to one and all. Come on, put your hands together for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We are here to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ, none other than himself today, for he is worthy of the glory. He is worthy of the honor. He is worthy to be praised. Come on, lift your hands and give God a wave for our friend in the sanctuary today. Wave your hands and give God a praise today because he is worthy of the glory. He is worthy of the honor. There is none like our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John chapter 15, verses 1, it says... I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me 
that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Hallelujah. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as, the fa as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Hallelujah. Amen. And the next verse says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Come on, are there any fruit bearers in the house today? Are we, do we have any fruit bearers in the house today? Are you a part of that branch? Are you a part of the true vine this morning? Come on. We are all connected to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because of the blood that was shed upon the cross of Calvary. And we have the right to be here because God is alive. He is not dead. Come on. There's power in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and start to declare the word of God. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in his name today. We know that because we've experienced it time and time and time and time again so we are giving God all the praise today look at your neighbor and say come on I've come to praise him come on just talk to your neighbor I've come to worship God come free yourself in God's house this morning we know that God is alive and we are here to worship and praise the God that is alive so we give him all the glory we give him all the honor we give him all the thanks and all the praise I just feel like praising I just feel like worshiping him come on help me worship him just take a few more seconds and just praise him just take a few more seconds and just magnify him just take a few more seconds and just give him the praise but he deserves it all hallelujah hallelujah I'm excited but what is going to God is going to do in this place today as we give him all the praise we give him all the glory we give him all the honor for God is not dead he is still alive so we're gonna sing and praise as we know that he is alive today hallelujah oh. God is not dead. God is not dead. He is still alive. God is not dead. He is still alive. God is not dead. He is still alive. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him all over me. I sing again. God is not dead. He is still alive. God is not dead. He is still alive, God is not dead. He is still alive, I can feel him in my hands, I can feel him in my feet, I can feel him all over. Me. God is not dead. Oh, he is still alive, God is not dead. He is still alive, God is not dead.
of my miracle and you're still working it out. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just want to encourage you this morning not to hallelujah. give up. Because the mere fact when you're about to give up is when God is going to give you that breakthrough this morning. Come on, encourage someone. Tell them, don't give up. 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 Hallelujah. Come on. When the children of Israel was being chased by the Egyptians, Jesus. come on, they thought that they were going to kill them. They thought that they were going to lose their lives. Yeah. But had Moses given up, come on, we know what would have happened. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of it all, in the midst of the trials, in the midst of the stresses, and in the midst of the people talking all kinds of things and complaining, mm -hmm. in the midst of God feeding them, Come on, some we are like that sometimes, don't we? We complain. Even when God gives us his best, we are still complaining. But I'm glad this morning that God hears us and he forgives us. And he's still going to give us that breakthrough. But come on, he didn't, they did not give up this morning. And when they was about to cross the Red Sea, when they look back, it's the word of God says, the Egyptians, they saw today, they saw them no more. Amen, amen. I'm glad this morning. As long as we obey the word of God, as long as we listen to the word of God, through the, through the person that will bring through the word from God, we know that we will stand in victory because God is good. Amen. So we're going to rejoice amen. this morning because we know that we have a God that is able. Amen. amen. So I'm going to dance and praise him. It doesn't matter what comes my way because the greater one lives.
In the midst of whatever the doctor says. I know that the doctors have given reports to many of our members, many of our friends, but we don't believe the report of the, of, of the devil, sorry. We don't believe the report, but we believe the word from God that says, I am healed. I am free. I've got the victory. Are there any victorious people in the house today? Oh, give God the praise. Give God the glory. Give God the honor. For we know that God's name is a great name. Today. Jesus, we exalt you. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Not to cause you evil, not to cause you harm, but for good this morning. And we trust in a God that is good. Amen. Yeah. We trust in a God that is awesome. Come on. Just free yourself up in the presence of God this morning. Just start to wave your hands. Come on, if there's anything on your shoulders this morning, just, just free yourself in the presence of God. Just free yourself in the presence of God. Because in the house of the Lord, there's freedom, there's liberty, there's joy. Oh, we are serving a God that is great today. Hallelujah. Oh, we exalt your name. We exalt your name. Holy, holy. Let me serve a God that is holy. It's a privilege to worship you, maker of all universe. It's, it's an honor just to stand before you. Holy, holy God, God Almighty. Oh, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to worship.
we know that we serve a great God. A great, big, wonderful God. And we're going to declare all the things about God that we know and accomplishes the word. It's great. Great are you, Lord God. Great are you, Lord. Great are you. Not like you. Not before you. Not after you. As I declare, I declare. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. I want to declare that again. Great are you, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Come on, give me more of the praise to me. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Oh, it's all the Lord. It's all the Lord. It's all the Lord. It's all the Lord. Oh, let's thank you for this love. Let's thank you for this grace. Great are you, Lord. Oh, let's thank you for this love. Let's worship. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. From beginning to end.
You are great, God. You're a great, God. You're a great, God. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we want to worship God to rise to you as a sweet smelling savor. We want to worship to reach you, God. Not just mere lips and mere speaking, but from our hearts today, God. God, it says, from our bellies shall flow rivers. Not buckets, but rivers. Not cups, but rivers. Not containers, but rivers. It's Jesus. I'm here to tell you his name is Jesus. No other name. No other power. No other thing. No any created thing. Come on. As the word of God declares, shall be able to separate us from that love this morning. From that name. Woo. To them, worship is filling the atmosphere, both now and then. Songs of your love will never end. All day and night, as we bow down, our praise will rise inside. Worship rise. My love, my love, all over you. From here, here to there. Worship is filling the atmosphere. Oh, my love, my love. 
to rise as a sweet smelling savor to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, here's a good place to say, Lord, I want to worship to rise to you. Here's a good place to say, Lord, I'm giving it all to you today. Come on. Believers in the house this morning, let's just raise at least one of our hands. In the midst of whatever is happening in our lives. Open your mouth this morning and say, God, in the midst of whatever is happening in my life. Let my worship rise. Like a sweet perfume. This morning, Lord, I'm going to pour my love. Come on now, touch the Lord. My my Don't let us just sing a song this morning. Lord, I lift my heart and my hands and say, let my worship rise. Lord, may it touch you. May it like a sweet Lord, may it have your attention this morning. I'll pour my love, everything I've got. My love all over you. Come on, say it a couple more times. Come on. Let my worship rise. Has nothing to do with how we feel. Like a sweet perfume. Sometimes you gotta push. You've gotta get into the holy of holies. My love, all the time. My love, all over you. Sometimes you don't need ten songs. Say, 
Let my worship rise, oh Lord, like a sweet, like a sweet perfume. This morning I'm determined to pour. I pour my love. Somebody walked in here discouraged this morning. Touch God with your love and your lies. Hey, let my worship rise, oh Lord, like a sweet perfume. If you want to lift all your hands, you. if you want to shout, come on, don't let it just be a song. All over you. All over you. All over you. Let my worship rise like a sweet perfume. Lord, I want to touch you. I'm going to pour. Love, How many of you love him this morning? How many of you appreciate that he loves you this morning? How many of you know that even if you were the only person, God would still look out for you today? I need somebody to lift your hands, and I, I want somebody to open your mouth. Let's, I'm going to give you 60 seconds and start to thank God for his goodness. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness, God. This morning, in the midst of the trials, some of us would have had a hard week, but we stand here in the delegated authority of Jesus Christ and declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We stand here in the midst of all that we have gone through this week that would have challenged us, and we still declare that you are a good God. We still declare that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We declare that you are God who is able. We declare that you are God who is bigger than any circumstance. We exalt your name. We bless your name. We holler for hallelujah. We shout to the King of Kings and the Lord of... Somebody shout a hallelujah right now. Father, we thank you for every trial. For God in the midst of the fire, you are right there. <laughs> Father, in the midst of the body, you are right there. As a matter of fact, we heard that in the midst of the madness, <laughs> God, you know what you are doing. And so this morning, uh, we exalt your name. We come into the Holy of Holies, uh, knowing that we have been received uh, through the blood of Jesus. Somebody say the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Father, we bless you this morning. <laughs> we let you know that you are able. And Lord, you are worthy, so let my worship rise. Oh, yes. Like a sweet perfume. You see, we are going on the knowledge and the power of God's word. Come on. I pour my love. It's not easy. We are going through our valleys. But God, we love you still. We worship you still. Let my worship rise. I can sweep up you. Oh, I pour my love. My love all over you. All over you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. All over you, Lord. Hallelujah. All over you, Lord. Oh, Lord, as the tears come down some of our eyes, all onto you, Lord. As we barely lift our hands this morning because of the challenges, but God, we got it done. God, we lift your hands. Lord, we were able to shout. Lord, we are still walking. We are still trusting. God, we give you the praise today. Understand this morning, folks, there is power in praise we don't just shout and sing songs but as we sing the bible says that as the praises go up the blessings of god comes down i want you to know right where you are in your circumstance that god sees you 
tell you that God knows you, that in the midst of whatever is happening, God has got it in control. If you believe that this morning, put your hands together, open your mouth, and shout a hallelujah. Don't whisper now, shout a hallelujah. Some of you won't do it at all. Shout a hallelujah, come on. Hallelujah, you don't have to feel it. Shout a hallelujah today. Don't whisper, shout a hallelujah. Look, look over to somebody. You don't know what they're going through. Give them a high five and tell them God got me and he got you too. Come on. Come on, encourage somebody this morning. Hallelujah. How many of you love him this morning? How many of you love him? Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord, I love you. You know, God knows everything. But when we open our mouths and lift our hands and say stuff, it is not for him. When I lift my hands and shout hallelujah, yes, it's for the Lord, but not only for him. It's for me. Because in the midst of my valley, when I say hallelujah, the devil start to get frightened. Come on. When I say it in the name of Jesus, principalities and powers start to take notice. Come on. Then I bind up now, they start to run. Somebody shout Jesus right now. Jesus. Father, I love you. Yeah. Somebody open your mouth and say, Father, I love you. I know that he knows, but still say, Father, I love you. Father, I love you, IT. Couple more times, Father, I love you. Say again, I love you, Lord. Father, I love you. Come on, talk to the Lord this morning. My heart is filled with desire to see your power and glory. Come on, say. Come and the earth as the waters flow the sea. Declare it. I am surrounded by the fortress of God. Come on, surrender now. Totally surrender to you. Come on. I lift up my hand, stand in all the shame. Come on. I worship you, Father, exalting You see, I might not feel it, but let's do it. You captured my heart. I lift up my hands. Let's do that one more time. Lift your hands and say, Father, I love you this morning. Father, I love you. I declare, my heart is filled with desire to see your morning in the midst of all that is going on in your life some of you walked in this morning I know maybe in your valley experience right now but if there are people here today who are going through your fire just lift your hands for me right now all over this house well in the midst of the worship how many of you know that God is right here in the midst of us so I want to believe that if God is in the midst of us, miracles can happen. Amen? Amen. So I want you, as I pray for you today, to lift your right hand 
and believe God with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are living in some perilous and difficult times. And I'm glad this morning that you never fooled us. You never tried to make us think that this would be easy. All throughout your word, you said that we will be challenged. There will be persecution. There will be trials. But also in your word, you've declared that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In your word, you have declared that you would not put more on us than we can bear. Father, you said that with every temptation, every trial, you're able to provide a way of escape. So we stand on the authority of a risen Christ. We stand on the authority of a Christ, of a God who's able. If you believe he's able this morning, raise your hands. Father, I pray for every person who have raised their hands this morning. The wonderful thing is that they left where they were and they came into your presence where they have set up to meet with you, with your people. So I want to pray, God, you know every need today. All I want to say is touch your people one more time. I come against every plan of the enemy over your people's lives. I bind up every foul spirit today as we give you worship, as we lift up your name, Father God. We understand that when the enemy would rise up against us, we are able to raise a standard against him. Why? Because we have the delegated authority to speak to demons and principalities and powers. So for every situation represented here, I speak healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. I speak deliverance in the name of Jesus. I speak to every demonic force. I come against every plan of the enemy over the lives of your people. And I declare this one thing. Who the Son has set free is free indeed. I want you, if you were in that prayer, to lift your hands and start to thank God for your victory right now. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. your freedom even though you might not feel it because we are not people of feelings we are people of faith so believe let us believe the word of the Lord not the various reports but we are going to believe in the report of the Lord give God a praise as Minister Lisa comes When you feel, even that song said, when he said he would pour his love, when God pours his love upon us, it doesn't matter whether we are in the darkest valley, whether we are in the desert, in the wilderness, there's amazing thing about God's love. Remember the psalmist says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because there are times when God will cause us to go through those dark places, but his love is what keeps us, his love is what sustains us. Indeed, the love of our God is indeed awesome. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You may be seated at this time. Don't mind, you have to get back up soon, but you may be seated. This morning, it is my privilege, it's my ministry to officially welcome you to Love and Light Ministries International. As we know, under the leadership of our Bishop, Dr. Marcus Herewood, and our Reverend Kathy Ann Herewood. For those of you who took the time, we are so grateful to view with us via Facebook. We really want to welcome you. We really want to thank you for joining with us to serve God, to indeed honor God, to glorify his name. And for all of those present in the house today, we want to welcome you. We give you, we give God the praise and we thank you so much indeed for being here. You know, the word says we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And so when we come here together, we are honoring what God's word tells us to do. So for those of you who are watching via Facebook and you can get out next week, Please do that because you're going to be honoring God 
when you do. Hallelujah. This time, I'm going to ask you to stand again. For the little time you sat, for the two minutes, for the two seconds, we stand again because we are going to declare some powerful truths, some awesome truths penned by our bishop, but indeed they came right out of God's word. So remember, as always say, we don't rush it. We are declaring some powerful words. We are declaring to our God, our Savior, our King. So that's what we are going to do. As we lift our right hands, not to honor me, not to honor any other human being, but we are lifting it in honor of our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, our God, our Savior. Father, pour your grace upon this local church. Give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation from your word that we may know you better than the day before. Strengthen us with power by your spirit and fill us with all your fullness and grace. Help us to see that we are one body in you, Lord, and to preserve the unity of spirit in the bond of peace. Teach us to rejoice with each other, to suffer with each other, and to accept and encourage each other. Knit our hearts together in love. May we never forsake the assembling together of this local body. Every member committed to Christ, fulfilling purpose. We declare that the gates of hell shall not prevail against your universal church. And everybody say, Amen, Amen, Hallelujah, Amen. Y'all may be seated again, please. I don't know about anybody else, but I can speak for myself. It's so good to be able to worship God without a mask on. I am one who is not about the mask thing, so I'm grateful. I tell people God created me to breathe. And so the mask is not helping me to breathe effectively. When I'm breathing effectively, I praise God better. Amen. Not saying that you can't praise him with a mask on. But I'm grateful for the little release. We thank God for everything, for small mercies. Today is a special day for me, our special week. For those who are celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, if there's anybody here present, in the house, I ask you to stand. Yeah, we got some birthday people. They're celebrating. They're looking lovely. They wear similar colors as well. So we have some birthday people. Whether you're here or whether you're joining us via Facebook. And you're celebrating. We're celebrating with you as well. But this time, our worship team who look very lovely in the back. And they yellow, they gold, and black. They look really beautiful today. The worship team is going to serenade all of you celebrating your birthdays and anniversary. Worship Amen. team. <laughs> Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. worship team and I pray that those celebrating will have a blessed and a glorious time throughout this week. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time we are going to do something very special. We encourage to give. I know we usually say we are giving back to God but today I want us to give to God. For normally when we say giving back we, know, we usually give back when somebody gives us. God has given us life. He has given us so much but today I want us to get into our purses Whatever little it is, God says he loves a cheerful giver. He does not slight you because you are not able to give. You may be able to give a thousand. Somebody may be able to give a dollar. Whatever you give with a cheerful heart, God is going to be thankful. He's going to bless it. Just like he blessed a thousand, he will bless a dollar. Remember the story with the widow of his might and her might. But remember that he loves a cheerful giver. For those of you, you can see on your screen the account where you can give in if you're able to give. You will see the information where you can go and you can deposit to give into this ministry. It's not to give so somebody's pocket can be fat, but it's to give 
so that we can continue the work in God's kingdom. So at this time, we are going to, you collect your offerings. We're going to stand in prayer. Um, even as you see the basket before, as you stand, the basket to the front, that is tithes and offering. The next basket is the plant of seed. The following one is the benevolent fund. Please remember to give in. There are many people out there who are, you know, they are, they, we need to help others. God bless us so we can bless others. And then the last final basket is for the Sunday school. So let us stand as we give God honor and we give God praise. Father, this morning we come before you indeed with thankful hearts. Your word is clear. You said in everything we must give thanks. And so, Father, Lord, today we thank you that we are able to place whatever we have within those baskets. Father, whether it is a lot or a little, I pray that people will not be condemned because they have a little, but they will be thankful for the little that they can give into your kingdom. Father, I pray, Lord God, for your blessings, Lord God. We pray that this money will be able to go far and wide. We'll be able to touch missionaries, Lord God. We'll be able to work in and throughout your kingdom. So, Father, we pray your blessing upon this offering, Lord God. And as we give, Lord God, may we walk to these baskets with thankful hearts and grateful hearts, giving you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The ushers will direct you from the back and coming forward. Thank you. Yes, I will praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Announcements for today, Sunday, the 9th of October. You may be seated. Who might still be standing? Sorry. Announcements for today, Sunday, the 9th of October, 2022, are as follows. From the Sunday school. The Sunday school continues to encourage all parents and guardians with children in the 0 to 12 age groups to allow them to join the virtual Sunday school session today and every Sunday. Today's topic is God Call Abraham. Kids, to hear more about this interesting topic, join in on our Facebook page where you will find the ID and passcode. And as you know, every Sunday I get to read the announcement. I put in that extra plug for our Sunday school. Encouraging you all, please. I was in Sunday school the past two Sundays and the Sunday before there were only two children in the six to eight. Come on, parents, grandparents. God, parents, whoever you, please encourage your children. It is so important that our children know who God is. It is so important when we see so many things. When we look at life today, and we see only this past week, we would have heard about over 20 children being killed in Thailand. These things hurt our hearts. And you know the things that are going on. It's so important that we raise our children knowing who our awesome and mighty God is. Amen? So please, whenever you get the opportunity for the zero to five, the children are younger. You need to log on with them. We are still only at one or two children in zero to five. Please, parents, take the time to log on. 
because this is very detrimental. We think that education is important to our children, but knowing God is more important. Amen. Right. I'm from Bible study. Our Bible study continues with Bishop Dr. Mark S. Herewood this Wednesday, the 12th of October at 7.30 p.m. on our Zoom platform. Join us for another powerful session from the Word of God. And we encourage you to join in again early and engage in the worship session. And I'm sure that many of us can say we have been blessed powerfully many, many Wednesday nights with these Zoom sessions. From the marriage ministry, the ministry will be hosting fundraisers during the month of October starting from today after church. We encourage you to patronize the sale table. The ministry is looking forward to your support. On sale is ham cutters, fish cutters, juices, lemongrass drinks, and lots of other goodies. So for those of who, who may not want to eat the things that you might gain the weight, they see they got lemongrass drinks. There are things that you can utilize. The marriage ministry's closing off event will be held on Saturday, the 5th of November, 2022. Renewing of vows, cocktails, and dinner evenings. And I'm encouraging all of you who are in the marriage ministry to save the date because I'm sure that they want to see all of you present. From the radio program, remember to tune in to Truth for Living program on Life 97.5 FM on Thursdays at 10 in the a.m. where you will be encouraged and enlightened through the power of God's word from our Bishop Mark Herewood. And this is also a gentle reminder to those who have committed to contributing to the radio program, not to forget to make your contributions. Remember, God words say, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. So if you've made your commitment, please remember to honor it. And even as I always say, even if you have not made a commitment and you have some extra money and you can give into the program, please do. Remember to continue to share, you know, on our truth for today, um, our daily truths. Um, remember to share those when you go in on Facebook and to share our service. I also want to take this time to thank every single who came out on Friday night for the session with Reverend Cheryl Trotman. We had an amazing time. We were blessed. We were encouraged. We had so much fun. We had laughter. She had us cracking up so much, but we were also, it was great knowledge that we gained and we had a really enjoyable time. So I want to thank all of those who would have been able to attend and to our Reverend Cheryl Trotman who always keeps it real. Indeed, we, as I said, we were really blessed. Remember to keep praying for the sick. Pray for one another, our families, our children, our society, our nation, and even beyond our nation. We must remember when we see how the world, we must remember it's important to keep praying. But in the midst of praying, always remember to give God thanks. Don't always ask, ask. You know, we always, when we ask for something, always remember to give God thanks. And always remember our minister Grace always say, when we pray, take the time to listen. Sometimes we babble on so much, we don't ever take the time to listen to what God is saying to us. So we just want to thank you. I want to take the time today to thank you so much for your patience and your attention to the foregoing notices. And at this time, it gives me great pleasure to welcome to our stage our very own Bishop, Dr. Mark S. Yearwood, as he comes to share the word. Remember, the word says... It will not re, uh, return void. So I pray that we have our grounds fertile and we will receive this word indeed. Welcome our Bishop Dr. Mark. Thank you. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord. Bigger than that. Come on. Hallelujah this morning. I want us this morning to stand as we read the word of God from the, ta the text that I want to share with you today. And as you stand, Father, I pray today for your direction, for your anointing. And Father, for listening ears, open hearts. We pray, God, that at the end of the day, you will get the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of my message this morning is God's great power working for us. 
want us to read together, I would read. You would look. If you want to read with me, that's all right. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 to 23 says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, Lord, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, or the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And has put all things under his feet. Hallelujah. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Which is his body. The church. Which is his body. The church. Which is his body. The fullness of him. Which is the church. Which is the body. The fullness. Church. The body. And the fullness of him. That filleth all in all. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the word of God. And you may be seated. This great passage, believers, covers a much needed subject in these trying times that we live in. The power of God. God's great power. If men, mankind ever needed anything, they need the power of God in their lives. Believers in Christ, we need the power of God in our lives. Did you hear me? Believers in Christ, we need the power of God in our lives. Saints, we need the power of God in our lives. We desperately need the power of God in our daily lives. And to right the wrongs of society. This morning I have some glorious news. God offers his power to all who have accepted his son Jesus the Lord. Including you and I. God promises his power to all believers. Lift your hands and say, God I thank you for the power. God I thank you for this great power. Understand the power that I'm talking about this morning is the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. It was the power that is God's power working for us. Paul wanted the people he was speaking to to know how great the power of God is towards those who believe. Christians should know they serve and love a God. Of living power. God who shows his strength on behalf of his people. Somebody must be encouraged today. The reality is though that many believers do not know this power. Or they only know it from a distance. But God wants us or wants resurrected life to be real in the life of the believer. Believer in Christ, we need the empowering, enabling power of God in our lives. Why? Because we are in a fight. We are in a battle. Did you hear me, believers? We are in a fight and we are in a battle. How many of you know that today? We are in a fight. and a How many of you are in the, in the heat of the battle right now? Come on. How many of you, there's something, the enemy is pressing against you. Why? Because you have determined that you are going to press in more for the Lord. Anybody there? You've made a determination that no matter what happens, you are prepared to stand firm for God. When things would come that would want to turn you away from the author and finisher of your faith, you can look and remember, you can sense the, the anointing of God, you can remember a verse that will strengthen you in your time of weakness. We are in a battle and we cannot fight it in our own strength. We need God's great power. You see, as we seek to fight against the forces of darkness and attack Satan and his world system and sin, without the standards and purposes of a holy and sovereign God, we obviously would be under attack as well. I ask a question this morning. You don't necessarily have to put up your hands. But how many of you are feeling the pressure of the battle today? How many of you in the midst of your walk, you, 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 can, you, you feel overwhelmed? 
before all the things that is coming against you. But I ask you today, are you, are we fighting actively? I say to us, we need to fight. Tell somebody you need to fight. You need to fight. You know, the God that we serve said very clearly that we will have these things coming against us. He said, once you're a believer, you're going to be persecuted. Once you're a believer, the enemy is going to come at you left, right, center, above and below. But we must be committed to the fight. And to fight effectively, we must operate under and experience the power of God. That same power that made Jesus Christ the head of his church. Understand that Jesus paid the price to start and build the church. And the reality is, if God had the power to create the church and to make Jesus the head of the church, then I pray I would encourage somebody today, then he has the power to make the body function and work for Jesus Christ. Did you hear me this morning? Don't miss this because there are many of you going through your fire and you are allowing your feelings to rule. You are allowing the pressure to cause you to not necessarily doubt God, but the pressure to cause you not to operate in the character that you know you have. The character that through Jesus Christ you have. You don't have to beg for it. You don't have to work it up. You don't have to, you know, do anything. It is perfectly done. It is perfectly available to us through Jesus. Are you with me this morning? Understand that Jesus paid the price to start and build the church. The reality is if God has the power to create the church and to make Jesus head of the church, he has the power to make the body function and work for Christ. Therefore, we can be sure that God has the power to get, his, get us busy for the Lord. God has the power to help us in our witnessing, the power to stir us, to proclaim the message of reconciliation. And to minister to the desperate needs of a lost world, reeling under the weight of sin, darkness, salvation, starvation, and becoming casualties, rendered effective, ineffective, and useless for fighting. I want us to recognize this morning that soldiers are not concerned with their comfort or quality of life during conflict, but they are oriented towards the future in expectation of the higher quality of life that will be enjoyed at some time. And that is what we have to look forward to. We must want to be in glory with Christ to such a degree that even in the midst of all that we are going through and experiencing, we fight. Did you hear me this morning? We fight. Our expectations need to be focused on the future as well as our present reality. Recognize that as we stay in the fight, our adversary will try all sorts of propaganda, all sorts of untruths and lies and these techniques to try to discourage us. But what we must recognize is that God's answer to all of this is that we have the same power available to us as was evidenced in Jesus Christ. God's great power working for us. How many of you believe that this morning? I hear you listening intently. How many of you believe that you have got the power of God to work things out on your behalf and for his glory. Come on, put your hands together right now. And let's thank God that we have the power. Because sometimes I get the impression that we do not understand this. Because as soon as something comes against us, we want to run away. Our natural tendency is to go and hide and to... Go and lick our wounds. You see, Paul presses all the words for power in his vocabulary into service in order to convey something that is what I call un, all encompassing or all surpassing character. Watch this. The different words, Greek words, speaks to the cumulative effect of what Paul was saying. He used words like dunamis, the word for dynamite, which speaks to strength, might, power. Now, as I speak these definitions and so on, 
as I speak about Jesus Christ, I want us to set our minds on this thought. Jesus has given us delegated authority. Are you listening to me this morning? Don't go nowhere. Jesus, we have the delegated power of Jesus. So when I'm speaking these words, I, am, I want you to keep in your mind as a believer in Christ, you have access to that same power. Don't just think about Jesus. Think about the fact that you have that same power. Are you with me this morning? He speaks to dunamis, strength, might, power. You have that though? Then why are you running? It speaks of energy, energy, power in action, work in power. Kratos, the strength exercising activity, overpowering master, dominion. Ischus, inherently or inherent ability. Watch this, whether exercise or not, strength possessed. Hear me this morning. It is time for us as believers, not just to know that we have access to power, but it's incumbent upon us to operate in that power, to walk in that authority, to be able to speak to circumstances and see them change. We have got to change our prayers. Oh Lord, help me. No. Oh Lord, you have the power and you took it upon yourself to trust little old me with it. But I am going to stand in the delegated power of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to speak to every principality in power. I'm going to speak to every valley. I'm going to speak to every distraction in the name of Jesus. It is God's power working for us. And as a believer, you have it. Look over to somebody and say, don't go by your feelings. You have it. But we, we, you see, we can have something, but never use it. How many of you remember maybe doing accounts 10 years ago? And now you don't even know what a balance sheet is. If we tell you about uh, your debit and asset to increase it and credit it to decrease it, a capital always carries a credit balance, you would go crazy. Your head start to overheat. Amen? But in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, we read this. Now all glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. To all glory to God who is able. Did you hear me? Through his what? Mighty power what? Watch this. Are you reading? Are you listening? Watch this. It says now all the glory to God who is what? Able. Somebody say able. Through his mighty power. But here's the icing on the kit. It says at work. Not just his mighty power, but his, his mighty power at work. Somebody say, at work. Where? Not at some store in town, but at work within us. Come on, somebody. It is his power at work in us. His power at work in you. Take that frown off your face. Oh, look at that mountain and stand in front of it and declare. With the authority I have in Christ, mountain be moved. Folks, we don't have time to play. We don't have time to, to ponder and, 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 and try to wonder. We must know that we represent a risen Christ. We must know that that power of Jesus is also inside of us. But hey, if you have a wonderful, beautiful car, you don't turn on that engine and press the gas and go down your aim moving. But watch this, you know. See, I want you to watch this. That is why you always advocate that when you're reading the word, you read it slow. And I always find God has a way of, you know, he says I make a leave it, but he has a way of establishing it that is even greater than we, when we get to that comma. Watch this, he says, now all glory to God is able to his mighty power work within us. <laughs> How many of you feel that you are not accomplishing anything? No, put it behind. How many of you, 20 years later, whatever, are, are probably questioning whether or not, watch this here. We have his mighty power within us. Somebody say two. Or two. To accomplish to accomplish that job you sent the application for. 
to accomplish that business and, and God bless it and you make a lot of money. That's small. Because it says to accomplish. Check the word. What the word says? Infinitely. You know, if you say infinitely, it should stop. Look over to somebody and tell them, man, you know the God that we serve is a big God. Come on, man. Do, do, start to talk to somebody. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Because he says to accomplish infinitely more. Let's do mass. Finite means you can write it down. You can, it's in, in its entirety. Infinitely means if you start to conk from one till you die, you will never stop conking till when you're dead. Are you all flowing with me this morning? So, so how, how come we're in a corner? How, how come we're crying? How, how come we're complaining? How come we're sad because everything is working for us? Well, we know that God says that all, everything works together for those who are, did you hear me? Somebody shout hallelujah now. Every single thing. We had some meetings with our, with our, with our new, new members coming on a um, couple of weeks in our time or next week, the week after. And if you hear the testimony of these people, that when they were at their point of hurt and disappointment, when they could have cursed God today, there are believers in Christ. There are people in the middle. And let me tell you, I've told them to really, we're going to give them time at some point to testify. Because sometimes we think that we're going through something. We think like that we're the only body that's going through something. And then when you hear the stories of people who have gone through so much that you ain't even as a tip of what you went through. And yet these people are able to declare, God, you are my God. God, you are my Savior. God, you are my present help in times of trouble. And some of us, just because we ain't getting raised, what kills our body? Just because, we well, leave that because. But you understand what I mean? Oh, somebody say, oh, the measure of the power. Come on. But, but, but here's the thing. God loves us so much. He says, look, to accomplish infinitely more than we might think, ask or think. Folks, in other words, where you are right now, God, we ahead of you. Come on. Somebody give God a prayer. Listen, because he's already infinitely more than we can even, we've been thinking about where we are now. But God says, look, you can ask and think, but you can't ask or ask me. You got your back, man. Somebody should be lifting their hands and giving God the praise. Oh, the measure of the power, the exceeding greatness. Folks, you cannot measure it. Hallelujah. You hear the word there? Infinitely more. Okay, infinitely more. Wow. You cannot measure it, folks. You can't exhaust it. No. It goes beyond all that we could ask or think. What are you asking for this morning? Here's the thing, though. We can have access to the power, but we got to do what? Appropriate it. Whether we exercise it or not, we possess it. I encourage you this morning, don't go by who you feel, don't go by where your neighborhood you come from. Don't go by what your last name content, um, you know, speaks to in terms of what people know about you or your family. The Bible says that when you give your life to Jesus, you are a new creature. All things are passed away and all have become new. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody say, God, I'm new. You don't have to feel it. Say, God, I'm new. Thank you. I want you to hear Ephesians chapter 1, 21 from our passage. It says, watch this. Far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Do you understand the backing that you have? Listen, principality, power, might, and dominion, all are words that describe various categories of demonic entities and angelic things or beings. Hear this. I want you to hear this, and I want to repeat it again. Principalities, because that's what's come against you sometimes when I discourage. Power, might, and dominion. Are all words that speak or describe various, speak to or describe various categories of demonic entities and angelic beings. But hear this. Listen to me carefully. Don't be distracted by nothing else. Hear this. Our Lord and Savior has power 
over them all. Man, somebody give God a pray. Don't, don't clap for me. Give God a pray. I am saying to you that in the midst of your valley right now, in the midst of whatever challenge you are facing, in the midst of what the devil will bring, in the midst of what principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and high places operate, the God that you serve is greater than them all. And not only that, the God that you serve is not only greater, the God that you serve has seen it right to look at you, believer, and say, look, you have the delegated authority. The same Jesus that said you are going to do even, oh, did you hear me? You are going to do even greater things than he has done. Do you understand who you are? Somebody lift your hands and say, I am powerful in Jesus. Come on, I am great in Jesus. It's not vain. It's not prideful. It is the truth. So folks, problems come to you to help you to exercise. Somebody say exercise. If nothing that happened to me, I don't need no power. If the devil ain't noticing me, I, I don't need no power. But as you start to declare that you are focusing on the king of kings and what he has called you to do and to be all hell breaks loose. But let me let you know that with Jesus, you are the majority. <laughs> I are with Jesus. You are not only the majority, but with Jesus, you have the authority. Come on. Oh, man, in the midst of whatever you're going through this morning, speak to it. Sickness, be gone. Look, put your hands on your wallet right now. Put your hands. You're broke. You see the money. I am believing you today. Put your hands on your pocket. God, with the delegated authority that I have, fill this wallet. Maybe the devil has been bombarding your mind. Place your hands upon your head. Devil, I want you to know that Jesus, who has put all things under his feet, has also given us the authority to put all things under our feet. And God, right now, I come and I take up that authority and I speak directly to every work of the enemy. I come against every fiery dart and I declare that my mind is transformed by God. My mind is transformed by the power of the Holy Ghost that is inside of me. My mind is transformed and greater is he that is inside of me than he that is in the world. My somebody need to start to war in this place. We are not fighting flesh and blood. But we are fighting against principalities and powers, church. And here's the thing. We are not fighting unprotected. You know, I heard as it was on the TV radio, the United States has been uh, uh, protected, well, helping Ukraine and sending all these these um, high technology tanks and so on. Let me let you know that when the devil comes against you, you don't have to send to the state or send to nobody for no equipment. Believer in Christ, when the enemy would, would gang up against you and want to take up your territory, you don't have to call nobody. You only have to stand in the midst of the battle and call on the name of Jesus. Come on. You've got to look up your hands and say, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood over every circumstance. Devil, get under my feet, for I have authority to speak like this. Tell somebody I've got it. You don't have to go into sackcloth and ashes for it, believers. You all go down and uh, pray for $1,500. You got it. But what we must do, don't tell, I tell you, I pray. What I'm saying, we must activate that power. You know you could have given those people an expert tank and they hurt themselves. They're going to turn it on their own self. You have to know how to operate in your power and your authority. Here's the thing. Understand, if you don't hear me, that the same power that Jesus has, he has dedicated it to us. I say to you today, believer in Christ, whatever you are struggling with, believer, whatever you and I are wrestling through, I want you all to understand it is minuscule. Somebody say minuscule. Somebody say it is small. Come on, open your mouth. Say it is small. Tell somebody it is small. Now, some of you didn't say it because it is big for you. But watch this. If, you, if I had stopped there and said it is small, you could probably say, are you moving me? Watch this. It is small. <laughs> Somebody said it is small. 
God help us this morning. It is small compared, somebody say, to the power it took to raise Christ into heaven and give him dominion as well. But I don't want to stop there. I want to add us to that because that same dominion that Christ has given, he said, look, you see you people? And that's why the devil don't like you and don't like me because he was in glory. All of a sudden, we were made, and we are the more specialist thing to the Lord. That should make you feel good. Doesn't mean that everything is going to be all right. But what it means is that God has seen us so special that he has decided, and they always look at this, to include us in what is going up. My Oh, Lord, God, help us. To help us. He wants to part. Listen, and he hasn't just said partner order us both. He says, listen, you can go hither, thither, and everywhere. and Stand up. Plant your feet down right in front of your enemy. You might be wide like me, short like I call him by name, tall like nobody name. But you have the authority. Somebody say, I've got power. Say again, I've got power. Hey, 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 you've got the authority. That when you see the fiery darts coming, you don't have to turn your back. And begin to look for refuge. Why? Because all refuge is Jesus. Since all refuge is Jesus Christ. But watch this. Not only that, but now, because of that, we are empowered. That when the enemy comes, we don't have to be afraid. Hey, God, devil send them. They're coming. They look dangerous. But God did not give me the spirit of fear. But of what? Power, love, and a soul mind. Devil, in the name of Jesus, I come against every fiery dart, and I return them a hundredfold to where they came from. Glory to God. Wow. God's power working for you and working for me. Somebody shout a hallelujah right now. So, in, because of all of this, I say to you, if I am in bondage, it is not because I need more power, you know. But because I have failed to utilize that power that is already in me. That is why I'm quite surprised when Believers can shout and give God praise when they feel good. Believers can give God shouts and praise when their wallets are full. Believers can give God praise and glory when their bodies, there's no sickness, there's no report from the doctor. And declare that he is ever so powerful. And then something comes up that stumps us. And we somehow forget that we have in, it, in us as believers... The power of God to lay our hands upon that sickness, to lay your hands upon that discomfort. It might be your mind. And stand up in the midst of it all and declare. I wish I could share some of the testimonies from our people today, but I'm going to leave that for them to do themselves so that I clear myself. But I pray that we will get to hear them soon. Because when you are in a circumstance and you hear a man of God and you're able to go by that word, somebody say the word, not the man. You hear a word from the man of God, not the man. Because sometimes you focus on the voice, focus on the message. And you can take that word, not knowing Christ, and say, listen, if I hear what I just heard about you, Lord, I, I am going to do it. And you walk into a room all by yourself. And speak to your circumstance that you were praying about for years. Because you heard a word. Somebody say a word. But notice the person didn't just hear the word. They acted on it. And folks, that's the point. And the testimony is great. You will hear it one of these days. So I want us to know that when we are addicted or in bondage, Jesus says, you're free. When we say we are hurt and wounded, hear me this morning. 
believer in Christ understand this. God says that you are whole as you need to be. When we say that we need counseling, God says, here I am. You have me. When I start to feel that I am not worthy, I am not good looking enough, I'm not as shapely as others, the word of God declares about you, whether you like your nose or not, your feet or not, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Somebody say, I'm wonderfully made. But I know some of you will say, that's a good word. You're speaking word. But how, how do we get about Check with me the practicality of this as I seek to bring this close in another hour or so. No, I got verse 22, so it can't be another hour. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22, King James. <laughs> He's talking about Christ here now. And has put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Folks, did you hear that? Well, if you didn't hear that, listen to me this morning. All things, somebody say all things. You know, it's the Bible, let's say some. You in the mud right now? All things. Are you with me today? All things. Now, what else does it say? What else does it say? It says this. All things are under his feet. Dominions, powers, addicted problems, pornography, profanity, gossip, depression, meanness, temper, sadness, laziness. You got a more ton of other things there. Whatever it is that we might not or cannot get over. But get this. All these things. The Bible says that all things are under Christ's feet. And people stop me and walk around. But Jesus got me back. Believer, hear this. Just like how all things are under Jesus' feet. As a believer in Christ, walking in the delegated power of Christ, you too have all things under your feet. My, oh, come on. These things need to excite us, man. I know that some of you will say, but you know, Pastor, there are things that are so overwhelming at times. But hear me today. Nothing is too hard for our Lord. Did you hear me? Nothing is too hard for our Lord. Start to say it. Nothing is too hard for my God. Come on, say it. Nothing is too hard for my God. Open him up. Nothing is too hard for my God. Some of you might be feeling depressed and you ain't say it. But that's why you're getting the victory. Say it again. Nothing is too hard for my God. Because when you start to make it too big, the devil will hold you in bondage. All things are on this field. And I say to you, Jesus is in, absolutely con in absolute control every situation. Be it financial, physical, relational, spiritual, vocational, parental, anything you want put there. Whatever might seem to be rolling your way that threatens to wipe you out. Hear me today, I'm encouraging somebody. It's already on the Jesus' feet. And maybe it's the very path that Jesus has chosen Upon which to restore us, restore you, rescue you. Notice the second part of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 23. It says this. And give him to be head over all things to the church. Which is the body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Folks, I say to you this morning that it is all about community. I have always been promoting this to my detriment sometimes. But folks, we need one another. You ever hear anybody, the head of an army, and don't have the soldiers? <laughs> What's the army that is? You're, I'm the head of love and light. All I see is cheers. And head of who? Cheers? We need one another. We need to be with brothers and sisters in Christ who pray with us and care about us. Why? Because the more closely we are linked to the body, the more clearly we will experience the authority of Jesus' headship. What did he say in the word? Where two or three are gathered together. Did he say where two or three are home apart? No, that are gathered together. He said, listen, one will put, what, a thousand. So you can get some victory, saints. Come on. One of us will have victory, man. We got authority. But here's the power. He says two will put, what? Y'all check the mass? I ain't going there again. He 
You see, that's the way it works. The church, believers in Christ, is the fullness of him. Don't lose me now. Come on. Which filleth all in all. The church is the body of Christ and is filled with Christ who completely fills everything. How can we be full of the Lord? The church is where the headship of Jesus will be enjoyed. I spoke on numerous occasions about not forsaking the fellowship, the fellowship of the saints. You can say I can study the Bible alone or pray on my own, but our Heavenly Father, like any earthly good father, would want to see his children doing what? Interacting, isn't it? And you have two children. You don't want to see them fight. You want to see them learning. They will probably fight in between. But you see them learning how to deal with the challenges, how to deal with disagreement, how to deal with criticism, how to deal with people maybe sometimes saying the wrong thing to them. That's what a loving father wants. And that is what the Lord, our Heavenly Father, wants for us, to see his children interacting, lovingly sharing and growing in the things of God. We believers are his body. The fullness of him who fills us all in all. God's power to us intends to fill the universe. And we've got to see our mission. Don't only think about ourselves with the authority of his crucified and risen son. His intention is to make us the church, you and I. Those who believe the means of that fullness. The embodiment of that fullness. Jesus as the head over the church is filling. Filling the church. Somebody say filling. Filling the church in a special way with his spirit, his grace, and his gifts. It is in his fullness. Church, you hear me? If I got a gift and I'm using it, how is his fullness going to be magnified? If I am, have a gift and I'm allowing the devil to steal my joy because I don't understand the authority that I'm walking in. As Lord over all things, he fills all things. But I want us to understand this morning that his filling of the church is different. Only the church fills all things. But here's where we got to see ourselves and be special and be, not feel special, but, but, but walk with the knowledge, walk with the, your shoulders, my hand. Walk with a confidence that only the church is Christ's body. Look over to somebody and say, you're a believer, you're special enough. You're the body of Christ. And watch this, he rules it, the body, and fills it in a special way, you and I. What this means is that we, as a church, are entirely dependent on Jesus Christ. What makes us something significant is not how we dress. Or how good looking people say we are. Or how technical we are or whatever. How talented we are. It is all about our relationship to Jesus Christ. What makes us something significant, believer, is that we walk in the, with the understanding that Jesus fills the church. Now, now, now don't think that we're talking about people. In terms of numbers. For every single believer that comes together to work within God's body, his church. The Bible says that he's filling his church. Rich says, Carl, he's filling you. He's filling me. But somebody this morning came to me not knowing what my message was. And said to me as I was there, you know people can receive the spirit. But you got open for the spirit. You got to invite him in because he's always here. And I use the analogy. If you want to go and get a glass of Morby, how many of you go to the fridge, take out the Morby, pour it, and then look for the glass? Anybody did that recently? Huh? Reverend Kathy, I need a glass of Morby. My dear wife poured the Morby and said, bring the glass. She probably want me to rake it up off the floor. And folks, that's how we operate with the power that we have. God says, I got power for you. You get with people standing up and talking pretty and, oh yes, don't you know we have the power of God? I walk through the door and somebody called and said somebody died. Or listen, the doctor report came back. The doctor said, come quickly. All of a sudden, you faint right door. You're human. You could faint. But what I'm saying to us is that if we are constantly walking with that authority, when the bullets come, when the, the fiery darts come, they will buffet us. 
Because some all might not miss. But because we are bulletproof, we've got. You know, you watch pictures, and the main character get four bullets in the chest. Oh, he done the only picture. All of a sudden, you see the marsh here cough. A little dizzy got a little pain in the chest. Open the jacket, four holes in the vest. When the devil comes, when he done let go his darts, open your jacket or your shirt and say what you thought. You were looking at, shooting at me. You were shooting at the shield called Jesus. Impenetrable. But somebody give God a praise. I done with this sentence. Let us believers in Christ today seek to walk daily in the authority and the power. And I also dare see one of the words I use was energy. Folks, we have to energize. I put in the same thing in a more diplomatic way, but we got to energize. Do you know that when your, start, when your car starts, there are, certain, there, there are parts that are working together. And you press that, guys, we still some things regarding it. You press that pedal. There are so many things happening under that hood that if one of those things do not work, the car can freeze up, tray off the road, start to drive it by itself, and carry somewhere you don't want to go. Here's the reality, saints. And so what we've got to do is we've always got to walk in that authority and power. So let us do that. Let us seek to walk in the authority and the power and the energy that we possess through Christ so that we as the church can be the body. Somebody say the body. Not just coming again looking pretty, but what? We are operating in the what? The fullness. So it means that if you're the same, are you singing to, to your heart's desire? If you can clean, you clean. And don't worry about that. If you, if you can sing, you sing. If you can, can, can intercede, intercede. Because what you're doing as you flow in what God has called you to is that he's able to pour more. He's able to fill his church more. So Carol come in filling his way. And the next person come in filling their way. And then we come together where he has called us to meet. And we open our mouths in one accord. And we call people who are sick. And we declare they are well. We look at people that are being bombarded by their minds and they're set free. Folks, I done. Don't get afraid. I mean done with the church. I'm finished with the message. But here's what I want you to do this morning. I want every believer, if you're here today, you're not a believer, I'm not leaving you out per se, but I, I want to I pray this prayer over believers today. So I don't want anybody to say, well, I need it or I don't need it. We all need to operate in the power. Amen? Can we testify to that? How many of you need to operate in the power more? Come on. How many of you know how to know that, know that the power, that power you have is in your town? So you say, oh, well, I can't call. And not any work. If we know, Lord, I do not know what is going on. But this one thing I know, that you are sovereign. And if it's happening, it means that you're working out something for your glory. And I can get some of that. Are you with me this morning? Stand with me, believers. Stand with me. Stand with me. Don't take a year. Come, stand with me. Come on. I want to pray a prayer with Paul. This is not a prayer that from my head, but as I was studying, I've been going through um, Ephesians. And I was just sharing the word. I remember chapter 3, verses 16 to 20. And I thought, here was Paul speaking, uh, praying for spiritual growth. And he prayed this prayer. I didn't start from the beginning, but I started from verse, verse 16. I started from about verse 13 or so. But I want to pray this prayer over you. So I am joining Paul, and I'm using Paul's words exactly as he has placed them in the Bible. But I'm using the New Living Translation. I want you to close your eyes with me. Not that closing your eyes is anything spiritual. But I want you to close your eyes with me because I want you to think about where you are. Some of us are all right. But look, all right doesn't mean anything. Today itself, somebody's life could be changed for the worse. Folks, this is the reality. This isn't trying to make anybody think. But what it really does is that we've got to learn how to thank God for every day, whatever it brings. We have also got to understand that when we are walking for Christ on a daily basis, please understand, this is how powerful and special you are. The devil is planning for you. He doesn't take a break where you're concerned. Some of you can testify, right? But understand who you are. Let us pray this morning as I, I seek to close. And the words are exactly what Paul says, except that is in the NLT. 
I pray that God's glorious unlimited resources, He will restore you, or with His resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts, I pray for you, as you trust in Him, believer. He was praying for us. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. That is for somebody this morning. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, understand how wide, <laughs> how long, this is the Bible, you know, how high and how deep his love is, God's love is. May you today, believer, experience the love of Jesus Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then only when you do that, seek to understand, receive that, he says, then you will be made complete. I pray this. With all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Verse 20 now. Now all the glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask and think. Father, today I pray that that prayer that as Paul prayed for us years ago would resonate with us today. And Father, wherever we are at, we would stand in the authority that we have. We would speak to our circumstance. And God, we know that we have the authority to speak to it. So Lord, I say, touch your people once again. Restore. For that person who's discouraged, touch them, God. Oh, may they start to press into the power. Maybe there's some who are fearful. They've gotten a report from the Lord that is difficult and hard to bear. But God there can bear it. Why? They have the power inside of them to bear it. And that same power can bring about deliverance and healing. So, Father, I say, bless your people. I ask these things in no other name, but the matchless and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Our believers, thank God. Thank God. If you receive this morning, lift your hands and thank God. Thank God for your deliverance today. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah this morning. Maybe there are some of you here who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Listen, I don't want you to leave here today and not have an opportunity to give Jesus your life. Maybe you were a Christian years ago, and like I was when I was a Christian at Batslid. I believe the report of the Lord. And if I go into church, the church can fall lump on me. And that God wants nothing to do with me. But I went nevertheless. And some 32 years, I recommitted my life to God. And I can tell you, I've had all kinds of challenges. But I'm still here. Why? Not because Mark here is special. As a matter of fact, it's the other way around. It's because I may not be special in people's eyes. God has still seen it fit to work in and through me to bring honor and glory to his name. That is also true for you, believer. Don't you ever forget it. But if you're here, you do not know him. Jump into this. Some of you say, I don't want to do it and turn back. You give God the opportunity. I'll show you that he will be able to keep you. If you're here today, you do not know him. Would you lift your hands and say to me, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Lift your hand. I'll see that hand. And I'll pray with you. I'm not going to rush it because... I somehow believe in my spirit that there's at least two people here today who want to do that. But you're saying, you don't know my story. Pastor, you don't know. But hey, I try to listen to me. God is bigger than your circumstance. I ask again, if you are here, you do not know Jesus Christ. Would you lift your hand? We'll see that hand and we'll lead you to Christ right now. Is there anybody? You don't be afraid. If you're sitting to somebody, tell them, listen, they want to go up. Come and go up with me. You're not going up to join love and light, but you're seeking to receive life. Is there anybody here today? Maybe you're on Facebook. All you have to do is to raise your hand and pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, I come to you today recognizing that I am a sinner. I recognize that I cannot save myself. So, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me for all my sin. And by faith, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. If your hands are say, I thank you to do it. Thank you for doing it. Father, we thank you for those persons. I believe too, so I might be at home. Call us, let us know, but I pray your blessings upon them right now. I pray they will not go back to where they were and that they will sense your peace around them. Form a hedge of protection around them. God, direct them to a Bible preaching church so that they can know more and more about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you said that prayer there on Facebook, just look on at our message. Send us a call, an email. We will send you our new converts course and also have an ambassador to work with you through the material. So please do that. So at this point, we just want to um, thank you for joining us. And may God continue to bless you and keep you. May his face continue to shine upon you. And may you experience his peace. Church, put your hands together. Let's thank God for all that he's done in and through us today. Hallelujah.